Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews, and it's the Not So Weekly, weekly news for another Not So Week. And what have I got this week? Well, I'm old, so I write things down because I forget. And first of all, DLG. You saw the review of the Hobby King 950mm DLG on the RC Model Reviews channel, and I'd like to say since then, I've had several 15 minute plus flights. Brilliant, excellent. Now, it's a small model. It's not as easy to hook lift with this model as a full-size DLG, but hey, considering you can just throw it in the back of the car, and take it everywhere you go, it is a great way to get into the hobby, and it's cheap, and it flies, and it's actually reasonably tough. I've, you know, of course I haven't, but I've heard of people who've had hard landings, and they're quite survivable, so there you go. So if you haven't seen that review, you can go and look at it. It's uh, the one before this one, I think. Now, uh, weather, we've had a crap week. As you saw in that, uh, that review of the DLG, it has been raining, but the rain stopped and then the wind came. It's been blowing a gale, and Oh, you know, so flight reviews pretty thin on the ground at the moment, uh, except that I do have a couple coming up, which I hope to get up in the next couple of days for you. Now, the Pulse Jet, the Hobby King Pulse Jet, again, I've got to put it on my test frame, fire it up. Hope to do that today, actually. The wind has abated somewhat. No good trying to start these things up in the wind because they're quite sensitive to, to wind direction or, you know, a strong wind can blow them out during the startup phase. You know, I'll show you some of the basics, how to get the damn thing set up, how to start it up. And we'll see if they run because at the moment I haven't run it. I saw a YouTube video of someone trying to run one. It didn't look like it was running very well at all. So, yeah, maybe we'll see if they work as good as they look in terms, well, they're very shiny anyway. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, yeah, I'm going to look at aircraft. I mean, what, you've got one of these Pulse jets. What are you going to put it on? Because there are simply no airframes out there that really seem suitable. You can't stick it inside the fuselage of an EPO MiG-15 because it will melt. Yes, you can put aluminium shielding, you know, like an aluminium foil or aluminium sheet and some ceramic blanket and things, but, you know, it uh, doesn't take much to go wrong and suddenly it's all melted and you've just got a big blob of glue or goo. So, yeah, I'll be looking at that. Now, I do have my big Pulse Jet. I put them on the Long Easy and on the Tame Cat, as you've seen in the video, I, videos I link to. Uh, there is a small Tame Cat from World Models. I think it's the uh, uh, Tame Cat EP or the Tame Cat DF. Two versions. One's got a prop up the front, one's got an EDF in the back. They look like they'd be ideal for the Hobby King Pulse Jet. But, as is always the case with the World Models, they're not making them anymore by the look of it. All the dealers that did have stock say, no stock, no stock. I've written to World Models asking if they've got any stock. I didn't even, didn't even get a reply. So, World Models, ugh. God, I don't know, they're so last century, I think. They really have dropped the ball there. They could be selling a heap of these things for the Hobby King Pulse Jet, and I'll do a build video showing how to put it together as I did with the original Tame Cat. So if you want to, you can drop an email to World Models. I'll put a link to their website or their email address in the description of this video, so you can go and hurry them along and say, hey, hey, you're going to make any more of these because the guy at RC Model Reviews wants to use them as the basis for a Pulse Jet powered RC model project using the Hobby King Pulse Jet, but I suspect they'll ignore you too. Nah, that's what you get. All right, I've got the Walkera QRX 350 here. Now, why did I get one of those? Uh, because everyone says it's crap. <laughs> I mean, well, not everybody, but a lot of people say, hey, it's no match for the uh, DJI Phantom and some of the other, like the, what is it, the QR Blade or something, I don't know, some other things on the market. Uh, but there has been some new software for these things. And I got three new versions of the software arrived today. But I'm just waiting for the programmable, you know, the reprogramming tool that you have to get the UP02 or something. It hasn't arrived yet, so I'm waiting on that. And um, when that arrives, I will be upgrading the firmware. But I'm going to review it in its out-of-the-box format to start with, so you'll find out if it's really as bad as they say. I don't know, I've seen some good videos on it, but again, I've seen a lot of people whinging about it. So I'll tell you, and you can make your own mind up, because it's a bit cheaper than the Phantom, and it's a quite a pretty looking little thing. If it flies, woohoo, it'll be good. If it's not, it'll be crap. What else have I got here? Repair videos. Now, I've been working, as you can see, I've got the big tools out here, got the scope out. I've been working on a Turnigy 9XR that someone sent me. It's been a bit of a tricky fault, actually. I'm going to do a video on that how I tracked down what the actual problem was and my attempts to repair it. And yeah, Google Plus, I have to mention that, you know, I've did a big rant on my XDIC channel because Google Plus, we, I use Google Plus. I've got a Google, I've had a Google Plus account for ages and I've used it, but it's not something you should be forced to link to YouTube with. So I've done a rant, not gonna say go over it again here, except to say that my mate, Dave Jones from Australia also did a rant on the same subject and he's actually shown you why from a producer, a content producer's point of view, Google Plus and the new YouTube comment system is such a pain in the backside. So go and have a look at his video. He demonstrates the, the, the bits that are broken and the amount of extra work people like myself and Dave have to do in order to try and keep up with the comments that will appear on our videos as a result of the Google Plus thing. It's terrible. Oh, absolutely awful. Now, it's 
coming up to the spring or the summer it's already spring it'll be summer soon and it's, that means t-shirt time so it, as I've always said every year and you know I've said send me a t-shirt and I'll wear it take this top shirt off when it gets warm enough you'll see the t-shirt so if you've got a message a slogan a product a service you want to plug and if it's not offensive or whatever I'll wear the t-shirt and my dozens of regular viewers will get to see your message on my manly chest and hey it's probably the cheapest bit of advertising you'll get on the internet although it's not advertising because I don't endorse what you send me I'm just gonna wear it and it's a great way for me to get free t-shirts let's face it um, now something else the um, lipo shipping thing with Hobby King now I mentioned in my last not so weekly weekly news that Hobby King had promised to put things right if you put an order in they sent you an email everyone got an email saying if you've ordered lipos between this date and that date then fear not we will see you right we'll upgrade your shipping to the more expensive option so you will get your lipos and I said that's really good if they do it and I was a little skeptical that maybe it was a PR thing and so I waited you know I thought oh, I'll just I'll get a notification that's been reshipped no nothing's happened nothing happened I waited weeks and weeks and weeks nothing happened just sitting there it wasn't even in the print queue it hadn't or it wasn't even printed it was just paid processing I thought oh, this isn't look good and I'd heard that other people in the meantime had ordered lipos paid you know for FedEx delivery and that arrived so I thought well it doesn't look like Hobby King are going to follow through on this it was a you know bit of hot air on their part to defuse the situation perhaps so I contacted the Hobby King support and said look quoted from the letter that Hobby King had sent saying we will upgrade your shipping to at our cost to, to make sure you get your lipos quoted a bit from that email sent it to the support thing on the support ticket and I got a reply back saying oh it's not our fault it's it's because of the shipping things and then they sent me back the letter I'd quoted from yeah right no one's paying attention it's just obviously someone's going stamp next stamp next and they're not actually reading the support emails or maybe they're just overwhelmed with the level of support required over this whole lipo shipping fiasco but anyway so I went back and said hey no 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 read my read my thing when will you be shipping my lipos because it's been weeks now and they said oh sorry we can't no um, because you ordered a six cell 5000 milliamp hour battery pack it exceeds the 100 watt hour maximum that FedEx will carry so we can't ship it to you and that's going to be a bit of a problem really isn't it because six cell EDFs and bigger electric models are becoming quite common now and the problem is if you're ordering from the international warehouse they can't ship you a six cell 5000 milliamp hour or bigger lipo because it exceeds the maximum that FedEx will allow them to ship so there's no way to ship it so all those big lipos are going to sit in the international warehouse and go mouldy I suppose or they'll ship them out to the regional warehouses but they're not going to sell any from the international warehouse so in the end just as well I did that video showing you how to use two three cells to make a six cell because I had to end up placing two orders I cancelled my original order got the money as a store credit had to place two orders each one with a 5000 milliamp per hour three cell pack and then join them together at this end and away I go so I got what I needed in the meantime but more expensive more convoluted what a pain in the backside and it's a shame that Hobby King couldn't just send an email out to people whose battery orders exceeded the maximum saying we'd love to upgrade your shipping but unfortunately we can't because FedEx won't carry this amount of lipos in one shipment they didn't do that they had to, I had to wait and wait and wait and wait until I gave up and then I had to contact Hobby King it's a bit of a shame they could have you know how to turn a silk, silk, well, a silk person to a sow's ear really they really stuffed up that PR opportunity because I know a lot of people like myself are still sitting we're sitting there waiting 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 for this upgrade and it's never going to happen never got I, I suspect if I hadn't done anything three years later that would still be sitting in the queue saying processing processing until I actually said hey excuse me uh, yeah but never mind that's just the way things are sometimes in the hobby business what else have I got here oh yes now we all know that there's problems with me actually there's problems with anybody flying at this airfield in fact the whole town of Tokoroa is a mod no fly model zone it's crazy it, I'm actually going into the hobby shop well, not hobby shops a little electrical shops and other places that sell these coaxial helicopters you know that the, the reasonably big ones because selling them in this town is silly because you cannot legally use them in this town it's it's a crazy situation not only has the council passed bylaws to prohibit flying them in any public place which is parks reserves sports grounds but also you can't fly them in your own backyard because 95 percent of the backyards in this town are within four kilometers of the airfield and CAA regulations say you may not fly a model aircraft within four kilometers of an airfield without your wings and it's some eight nine year old kid who gets one of these for Christmas and goes wow he doesn't have wings he can't fly it without breaking the damn law and when I spoke to the CEO of the local district council saying you know this is silly he said oh yeah but it's not likely to be enforced you know if it's not likely to be enforced you know they can do it anyway so what's he trying to tell us if you think a law is unlikely to be enforced or you don't agree with it just go ahead and break it 
It's a fine attitude, isn't it, really? Instead of buying a model aircraft being a way to get our kids on the first rung to a career in aviation, it's going to give them their first criminal conviction. Oh. Anyway, so on the XDET channel, I'm putting up a video of way I want to work around this so that we can get this town more model friendly and also, very important, allow you, because I know a lot of you people, especially the ones that subscribe to my XJet channel, you want to come out here, so a lot of you have come out here and flying with me and flying with Barry and other people that are here at the time, have a really good time. We've got models here waiting for you, we've got radio gear all set up, mode one, mode two, you can try it the Tyrannus, see what you think of that, um, if you're going to come to New Zealand and fly here at the Tokara Airfield, but you can't do it at the moment. No completely illegal. You, no way you can manage it according to the council and the civil aviation. But we have a plan. I have a plan to get around that. So go to the XJet channel. It'll be up in a day or two. Hopefully by the time I get it all rendered and edit, edited up if it's not up now. And it will require a little bit of help from you guys. But if you guys help out, I think we can swing this and we can turn this airfield into a mecca for model flying, not, you know, um, a no-go zone. So help me out with that one if you can. In the meantime, that has been another not so weekly week. Check the description for links and other important information that I've forgotten because I write stuff down, but I'm so old I forget to write stuff down. So might be extra stuff in the description. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you think it's useful so other people will find it. Stay tuned because now that my cold has gone, I had a hundred day cough, they call it. I was, I was trying to do videos, cough, cough, cough. Oh, terrible. But fortunately my cough has settled down so now I can get on and do the videos like the repair video, the QR350, QR350 video and all the other stuff that's laying around here. So bye for now.